Mexican folk art mirrors are usually made from tin. Artists create designs around the mirror's edge. Artists use lots of bold, bright colors and patterns in their designs. For our project today, we'll be using a square piece of paper. This is just a scrapbook page. And then we also need a variety of sizes of circles to use as well. We'll have to have some larger ones, medium ones, and small ones to trace. I'm going to start by using a Sharpie. And then I will also be using some either aluminum foil or some type of reflected paper. I have some sequins that I'll be using in this project along with some liquid glue. And some type of colors. I'm using these Neo colors. They're kind of like these watercolor crayons, but you can really use anything. It is nice to have something that works well on colored paper. I'm gonna go ahead and trace my circle. I will be cutting mine out later, so if you want to have scissors as well, you can do that, or you can just leave it as a circle on the paper that you have. That is entirely up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and trace my largest circle here by using my Sharpie. If you are more comfortable doing it in pencil first, that works. Then I'm going to use my Sharpie to create a cross in the center of my circle. Now, if you're more comfortable using a ruler, you can do that. You wanna try to make it so it's right in the middle of the circle. Mine's a tiny bit off and it doesn't matter too much, but if you're one of those people that likes to be precise, you may want to measure it out to get it right in the center of your circle. Next, I'm going to use some smaller circles to trace. It really helps when designing your pattern if you have a variety of sizes of circles. So I have this Cool Whip container that is a smaller circle. It works really well to put right inside of my other one and trace that with a marker too. And then I might even find one more circle. Let's see if I can find something even a little bit smaller to go in the center. So using kind of a variety of circles is really nice when creating the design. All right. And my cup actually left a little bit of a water mark in the center so I might use that as a little circle too. I'm just gonna trace that. My center circle's actually gonna get covered up with the mirror paper, so it's not super important that it's perfect. All right, now I'm going to start making a design that will use radial symmetry, okay? Radial symmetry means that the object should be the same Kind of all the way around. So each of these quadrants that I made by dividing my circle into four parts should look the same. So I'm trying to draw the same thing in each of the four sections of my circle. I'm going to go ahead and move to the next ring and design something that is the same in each of those quadrants. Now you can do shapes, you can do lines, you can do any type of pattern that you would like as long as it all four quadrants have the same pattern. They all match and are equal. So I'm going to go ahead and create different lines and try to make sure that they match in each section. Now, if you want it to be really precise, you could be using a ruler to make all of these lines. But for this, I am just kind of eyeballing it and trying to make it as equal as I can.
Next, I'm going to go ahead and move to the outer ring and I'm going to add more lines and designs that match in each quadrant. Whatever I do on one, I have to do on the other three as well. I'm trying to do a variety of straight lines and a variety of curved lines just to kind of make some type of pattern for my radial symmetry. I wanted to go ahead and do a triangle as well to break up this large space. If there's any spaces that are super large, you may want to break them up into smaller areas. I can also add some floating shapes inside of some of my other areas like these triangles. So you can keep kind of playing around adding to your design until you feel like you have enough filled in and you are ready to start adding some colors, some details to your work. So I'm going to kind of just keep on adding some things all the way around my circle until I feel like it's nice and full and I can start adding some color. Now the nice thing about working on colored paper is that you can actually use white as a color to color on as well. So this is why I recommend using maybe oil pastels or chalk pastels or even crayon, something that will color over the colored paper nicely. So these Neo colors show up pretty nicely on this colored paper. And it's nice that you can use lighter colors over dark paper if you need to. You can also see that I have sped up my coloring process just so you can kind of get an idea of what I am doing. I'm just going ahead and choosing various colors to fill in my mirror and make it nice and colorful. If you want to, you can pick a color scheme and kind of have those colors repeat throughout your mirror picture. All right, once you have your mirror colored in as much as you would like, and notice I did leave some of my original paper color showing through, you can go ahead and cut it out if you would like, or you can leave it on your square paper. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out. I do want a circular mirror shape, and so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the extra paper. I'm trying to take my time, make a nice, neat cut all the way around for my mirror. Once I have my paper cut out, I'm also going to use my reflective paper or my aluminum foil, I want to make sure to find something circular that I can use that will be for my mirror. 
I trace the circle that works for my mirror and I'm going to go ahead and cut out that shape with my scissors. I'm picking something kind of small. It just depends on how much space you have in the center of your mirror to work with. And I am going to go ahead and get that ready to glue onto my mirror. You can see that's nice and reflective. It will fit nicely in the center part of my picture here. I've got just some liquid glue that I am using. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on the back of my circle. And then turn it over and attach it to my mirror. Now I could be finished at this point and have this beautiful mirror, but I did happen to have some sequins. And so I want to go ahead and just add a little bit more sparkle. A lot of times these mirrors are made of tin and the tin tends to be a little shiny. So by adding these little sequins to my mirror, that can kind of give that little shine indicator. So the, the trickiest thing about adding these sequins is trying not to get your fingers covered in glue. It may be easier to have your glue in a cup and use something like a Q-tip to apply the glue or just know that your fingers might get covered in glue. Um, you could also put the glue in little dots where you want it on your mirror and then just kind of drop the sequence on top. So however you can get those on would be awesome. But I did like the fact that they added some a little bit of glamour, a little bit of sparkle besides the mirror to the project. So I'm just going to go ahead and add those sequins throughout my mirror. You can do a couple, you can do a lot, just depending on what you have. I'm trying to keep my sequins in the same color scheme as well, which is kind of the pinks and the purples. So I am using those colors to decorate. And there is my Mexican inspired mirror. I hope you enjoyed doing this project. Please come back to Elki Art again for more fun art tutorials and project ideas. Thanks for watching.